Let's get some more reaction to this then um, from John Linden. He's the executive director of the Alliance for Middle East Peace, which is a network of over 150 Israeli and Palestinian organizations engaged in grassroots peace building. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Uh, you heard our correspondent there saying this is just the latest sign and there may well be more escalation to come. Would you agree with that analysis? I mean, yes, uh, sadly, the, the last year, over a year, really, has seen this dynamic of gradual escalation and increase in violence, increase in bloodshed and loss of life. And we're seeing the kind of return of, of symbols of the Second Intifada. As Iris mentioned, helicopter gunships in the skies over the West Bank for the first time since the Second Intifada, um, you know, roadside bombs, daytime raids into cities, which really uh, hadn't been so much of a feature in recent years, are now a very regular occurrence. And we've had several of them this year, mostly, again, focused in Janine and Nablus in the north of the West Bank, where, again, as Ira said, the the writ or the control of the Palestinian Authority has sort of been, been sliding, uh, ceding ground to these uh, militias who are in control of some of the big refugee camps in those cities and driving events. And then, obviously, as well, we have uh, a government in Israel, which is... Uh, uh, certainly has elements within it that seem to be fanning the flames. So, so yeah, the trajectory seems to be very bad with no sign that it's going to improve in the short term. And you mentioned the second intifada, which took place in the early 2000s. Um, given the fact that this violence in the West Bank has been rumbling for you know, over a year now, are we looking at a third intifada, do you think? It's difficult, right? There's no uh, kind of objective criteria for you say now we're in an intifada. We can look at the numbers. I mean, last year was the most bloody year since the second intifada. Uh, and this year is on track to, to supersede it quite significantly. We've 122, I think, uh, Palestinians have lost their life uh, this year in the West Bank alone uh, and around 20 Israelis in either the West Bank or in, in Israel proper. So, so that is getting towards the sort of numbers, the grisly numbers that we saw during the Intifada. I mean, the, the thing with the previous two interf Intifadas we've had is that each one is very different to the other. And I think people who are expecting some sort of uh, rerun of the second Intifada, I mean, first of all, God forbid, but also uh, the criteria and the political variables at the moment are very, very different. Um, so the Palestinian Authority had much more control over events uh, in, in, in the early 2000s, uh, whereas now it seems to really be sliding in influence and it's a much more sort of uh, broad uh, coalition of organizations, movements, militias, many of which have only sprung up in the last 12, 18 months, uh, most of which are being um, run and, and powered by very, very young men. So the dynamic is, is really dangerous. And I think also when you think about the previous intifada, certainly the second one, there was a role for the international community to be able to engage directly with the PA and some entities also engaging directly with Hamas to de-escalate. And it's not clear that those same tools will be usable right now, considering the more kind of informal nature of, uh, of some of the actors who are deploying violence. And just briefly, finally, your network, as I mentioned, works with peace building organisations on both the Israeli and the Palestinian side. I wonder sort of how far away peace feels to them right now and how they think meaningful de-escalation happens. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I was in Jerusalem two weeks ago. We had this huge Peace Builders Conference with 600 Israelis and Palestinians all gathered talking about very practical ways they can work together for peace and equality. You know, and you walk around that event and you see this sense of what things could be like. And then looking at our screens today, you see the reality that's pretty uh, sort of firmly embedded. And, and I think... There is no shortage of Israelis and Palestinians who want to counter these events. What they need is more amplification, more support, and more international diplomatic support as well. Whilst the work of peace-building organizations on the ground is critical, and it's, it's drawing young people towards these sort of activities rather than towards violence or despair, but they do also need support from an international community that needs to amplify that and restore a diplomatic horizon. Ultimately, there has been a deprioritization of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict globally in recent years. And uh, if we want to try and see this sort of third intifada you were hinting could be could be coming disrupted, the international community needs to restore that diplomatic horizon and show a path non-violently, diplomatically, that Israelis and Palestinians can get behind and believe in. John Linden from the Alliance of Middle East Peace. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you.